very much. Welcome to Tonightly. My name is Tom Ballard. Tonight we bring you stand-up comedy from French bon viveur, Marcel Lucon. <laughs> Marcel Lucon. Hey, what's our friend Donald Trump been up to? With the First Lady and the Easter Bunny by his side, US President Donald Trump has kicked off the 140th annual White House egg roll. The White House South Lawn was full of excitement as children raced across the grounds, balancing an egg on a wooden spoon. OK, everybody else saw the Easter Bunny, right? That wasn't just me. That wasn't some Donnie Darko shit. What the fuck is happening? I guess it's a fun event for kids, you know? So it'll be fun for the kids. I mean, it's not like he would have talked about any serious policy issues while the bunny was around. Our military is now at a level, will soon be at a level that it's never been before. It's, uh, you see what's happening, and you see what's happening with funding. The funding of our military was so important, and so many military people are with us today. So. Just think of $700 billion, because that's all going into our military this year. What in the name of sweet Jesus? $700 billion for guns and bombs, so we can kill and maim civilians. Enjoy those chalky eggs, kids. Boom, boom. Sad. Even the bunny's thinking, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? It's weird. It's inappropriate. It reminds me of the time Paul Keating gave his famous Redfern speech next to Pluck a Duck. You know, it didn't feel right. <laughs> It was, it, it was inappropriate. <laughs> that didn't happen. If there are any Finnish people in tonight, that didn't happen. <laughs> it's a long tradition of the Easter Bunny being at the White House. Presidents, presidents love the Easter Bunny. Why wouldn't they? Right? The Easter Bunny is cuddly. The Easter Bunny is patriotic. And it roots like a goddamn rabbit. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Good times. Uh, look, that's some serious news there. Just a bit of uh, personal news. If it, this is a bit indulgent. I hope you guys won't mind. But um, I'd actually like to acknowledge tonight is the anniversary of the death of my grandfather. Uh, my grandfather was a really <laughs> wonderful man, really, and we loved him dearly. He was pretty, pretty sick towards the end there, which made us all really pretty sad. And uh, I think... What the fuck are you doing here? Get out of here, Easter Bunny! <laughs> totally inappropriate. <laughs> Bad news for Bunnings, the Australian business Bunnings. Uh, he's still hopping. What are you doing? <laughs> You're off camera, mate. Bunnings in a bit of trouble overseas. The owners of Bunnings, a West Farmers, bought UK hardware store Homebase two years ago for $700 million. Which, to put that in perspective, for Sydney house prices, that'd get you an alley toilet. That's, that's basically <laughs> what you get. And things haven't worked out well for Bunnings in the UK. Last month, West Farmers wrote off a billion dollars and analysts predicted Bunnings UK won't break even until 2022. But the world will have definitely ended by then. So if you're looking to build a deck in the post-apocalyptic wasteland, you'll get a great deal. <laughs> who could have seen this? Who could have guessed that an Australian homeware store would be so ill-equipped to tackle the British market? We're so similar. Apart from our seasons, our geography, our love for the outdoors, our passion for putting up gazebos, sausage sizzles, we're totally the same. Anyway, now it's time for a word from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Bridie, and I'm proud to be bringing Australia's favourite DIY store here to the UK. We have a great range of outdoor furnishings so that you can entertain in the sunshine. You what? We have parasols and a great range of gazebos for even more shade. No, no, there's only more shade. The whole country's in shade, love, isn't it? That's here at Bunnings UK. Have you got a barrel full of tea? Bunnings Warehouse! Well, well, not as much as you Today, the Coalition are following in the Greens' footsteps and doing some serious infighting. Malcolm Turnbull faces a challenge to his signature energy policy from a group of Coalition backbenchers <coughs> who have formed a lobby group to promote government support for the construction of new coal-fired power stations. And this group, of course, is being led now uh, by uh, Tony Abbott and Barnaby Joyce. I mean, that's the band that's been put back together. Coal is good for humanity. Yeah! God, I love that song. Give me another one. Woo! Climate change itself is probably doing good. <laughs> love that band. <laughs> Such a cool band. It also has George Christensen, Erica Betts, Craig Kelly and Kevin Andrews. What's this super cool band called? The Monash Forum. <laughs> Shit name for a band. <laughs> My suggestions were way better. I had Coleo, all right? Coleo and the gang. Coleo and the gang. Coal chisel. Earth, wind, fire and coal. 
and of course Coldplay. I mean, this is a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> Quite a few coalition backbenchers have signed up for this group to fight for the little guy, the multi-billion dollar coal industry. <laughs> coalition, they love their coal. It was right under our nose the whole time. <laughs> They're in the coalition. The coal. Coal play. <laughs> Tell you what, there's one guy who was definitely not in this Monash Forum supergroup, the Prime Minister. This is a very bad sign for uh, Malcolm Turnbull, not just because it's Tony Abbott, but there are so many MPs who could be signing this. This is the right of the party splintering off and saying to Malcolm, get with us, mate. Yeah, get with us, mate, or we'll fucking bash you, yeah. <laughs> you clean energy loving fucking nerd. Yeah. <laughs> you know you're a loser when you're being bullied by a gang who has this guy as a member. There he goes. <laughs> Such a good boy. <laughs> this gang is tough to get into, actually. Not anyone can join. If you want to be considered, you must take this extremely cryptic entrance exam, which has two questions. One, do you love Cole? Yes, no. <laughs> and two, are you Malcolm Turnbull? Yes, no. <laughs> Those are the rules. Despite this backlash occurring barely a week ahead of Turnbull's 30th consecutive news poll loss, Coalition MP Craig Kelly has denied that the formation of a pro coal group represents a challenge to Malcolm Turnbull's leadership. What does represent a challenge to Malcolm Turnbull's leadership is Malcolm Turnbull's leadership. So that's... Australian politics generally not doing very well at the moment. A recent analysis of Australian electoral study voter data has revealed that Australian politics is breaking down! <laughs> Ridiculous. I say Australian politics is just fine. <laughs> I stand corrected. I didn't realise there was a clip from our show in there. <laughs> Not a good sign. All right, Australian election study. How did you reach this unsurprising conclusion? Give us the data. In 1996, more than one in three Australian politicians, 37%, rated themselves as moderate, that is, centre-left Liberal or centre-right Labor. This proportion has shrunk dramatically. At the most recent federal election in 2016, only one in ten politicians described themselves as moderate. Mm, only one in ten politicians describe themselves as moderate. Interestingly, ten out of ten voters think politicians are fuckheads. <laughs> Absolute. <laughs> Spent a long time on that one. <laughs> there you go. Apparently we were all less extreme back in the 90s. Ah, oh, the 90s when life was simpler. Our politicians were more moderate. Our girls were more spiced. <laughs> Our turtles were more teenage mutant and ninja. <laughs> Our princes from Bel Air were more fresh. <laughs> and many of our favourite celebrities hadn't been revealed as sexual predators. Oh! <laughs> Simpler times. Who is responsible for all this? Basically, the point is that people like their own echo chamber. They like being, he seeing and hearing their own views. <laughs> yes, echo chambers are bad, said the comedian on the ABC. <laughs> to the man on Sky News. <laughs> I disagree. Social media, I think, is a great place for fair and balanced political discussion. OK? Here's, what? <laughs> hold. Hold for the punchline. Hold. Here's an example, right? Here's the ABC comedy logo. There you go. Bit of fun, nice and shiny. OK? Now, someone took that logo and they went on our Facebook page and they changed it up a little bit and it looked like this. There you go. <laughs> That's nice, isn't it? <laughs> Nice bit of discussion. <laughs> so the left and right are further apart than ever before. There is a solution. Those underlying centrifugal forces in the community that used to drive us together to become centrist, religions, mass media, the consumption of mass media through newspapers, through nightly TV news, all of those forces, union, community organisations, they are reducing in influence. Do you hear that? TV news is losing its influence. So we need to return to 90s values, bring back TV news, already shows that are kind of about the news. <laughs> Everybody watch those shows. <laughs> fuck Netflix, fuck Stan, fuck pay TV. Free to air is the shit. You've got everything you need right here. Don't leave us. We love, don't leave us. Ah, gone. 
can do it here at the ABC. We can appeal to everybody, all right? Okay, we have to be balanced. We're going to do our best to do that, okay, with this new following news report. Here we go. Okay, <clears throat> left and right. Coal sucks. Coal rules. <laughs> same se oh, fuck. Same sex marriage. Woo! <laughs> same sex marriage. Boo. <laughs> Mark Latham, circa 2003. Mark Latham now. <laughs> ABC comedy. ABC commies. There you go. <laughs> Something for everyone. Now it's time for another word from our sponsors. Are you interested in trying out home renovations here at Bunny? No. You're going to sing the fattest fish, love. You're not doing well. Hey, quick update on the rest of our week here at Tonightly. Joining us tomorrow, singer-songwriter Jack River will be performing live. <laughs> then Thursday, former treasurer of the country Wayne Swan will be joining me for a chat. <laughs> And if we're lucky, he'll also sing a song. <laughs> now, it's time to do our bit and terrify you about another scourge in many of our capital cities. Greta Lee Jackson brings you this important Tonightly Investigates Lee. They're the new foreign menace. Lurking in bushes, skulking in alleyways, some of them even loitering around your children while they're at school. That's right. Share bikes. <laughs> These weren't always creepy pedophiles. They came here offering convenience to the people of Australia. But unable to assimilate, they became ostracised from society, left to a life of drugs, with some of them even turning to sex work. It's this damn mess of these high bikes that are being dumped all over the place. It's a mess, but we'll keep at it. We don't give up, nor do we give up on the flying foxes either. Hey, bats, rats in the sky. From the rats of the sky to share bikes, the flying foxes of the ground. Things soon went downhill, literally. These bikes don't have gears, making riding uphill impossible. And then the inevitable happens. It was on the weekend and I rode a share bike down to the bottom of the hill to get to the beach. And then um, I just couldn't get back up the hill again. Trapped at the bottom of a hill, he soon resorted to cannibalism. No, I just got a cab back up to the top of the hill. But it gets worse. The hollow frame provides substantial space for shrapnel and explosives to be packed. It's just a matter of time before someone turns one of these things into a bomb, gets onto a plane and cycles into a building. <laughs> what are you doing to bicycle-proof these windows? Um, well, nothing. I mean, we're on the 43rd floor, so it doesn't really... Exactly. Matter. So if a whole cycling club attacked you, it could be worse than 9-11. It could even be 11 out of 11. So, sorry. No, um, so 9-11, that wasn't a score out of 11, that, that was a date. Mmm, <laughs> just... that's a high score for flying bomb peddlers. However, it's down on ground zero where the rubber hits the road. Well, I was walking to work like I normally do and then I saw it, so I had to walk around. And now I'm 20 seconds late to work. This is taking up more time as well. I'm going to be really late. That was just one man. But multiply that by all of Australia, and that's millions of dollars lost in productivity due to share bikes. Could this be an attempt by the Chinese government to destabilise the Australian economy? The answer is probably definitely yes. In China, share bike companies like Ofo and Mobike are pumping bicycles out of factories at an alarming rate. Terrorist activity, cannibalism and even worse, blocking footpaths. But who benefits? That's right, communism. <laughs> One thing is for certain, we've got to put the brakes on before Mao's vicious cycle destroys Australia once and for all. I'm Greta Lee Jackson. <laughs> reporting for Tonightly, Investigatesly. Our gazebos or our barbecues because you don't have any bloody sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> We're accepting any of your offers on the 
this entire Bunnings warehouse. Oh, I'm English. I love England so much. Bunnings. Where are you, boy? Everybody, it's a Tuesday night on the ABC, so it's time to talk about Marxism. Classic <laughs> us. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Marxism is a critique of the political economic system of capitalism, named after the works of 19th century German philosopher Karl Marx, or as I refer to him, Depressed Santa. <laughs> On Good Friday in Melbourne, over a thousand people turned out for the 2018 Marxism Conference, a conference where people come together to talk about how we need a mass working class revolution resulting in the overthrow of capitalism. It's kind of like Comic Con, except less realistic. <laughs> <laughs> Not happy with that, typical ABC. To be fair, after the 2008 global financial crisis, Brexit, Donald Trump and the rise of democratic socialists like Bernie Sanders and Jeremy Corbyn, some millennials are taking another look at the whole socialism thing and I wanted to take a look at them doing that. So I went along to Marxism 2018 to learn about the end of capitalism and also to make a sweet, sweet profit. <laughs> Greetings, comrades! The Marxism conference was on again in 2018, so I thought I'd head along, because according to Twitter, I'm a supercilious, pasty-faced, left-wing cockroach who leads a privileged life courtesy of your taxes. <laughs> Thanks, Supreme Leader Guthrie. <laughs> Thanks, capitalism. The folks at this conference really believe that we need a Marxist revolution, so I'm interested to find out what that revolution might actually look like. Plus, because this is my key demographic, I want to find out if these dirty commies are actually watching my TV show. Because nobody else is, baby! Do you watch Tonightly with Tom Ballard? I've seen clippets on Facebook. Thoughts? Hit and miss. <laughs> What's Tonightly? Well, it's my show, oh. and it's very funny, and it's promoting the cultural Marxist agenda. Do you watch Tonightly with Tom Ballard? I do, yeah. You do? Do I you do. think it's a Marxist program? Uh, close to it. I Ooh! Yeah. Well, it's good to know we're cutting through. I also sat down with some of the commie speakers at the conference, Indigenous activist Gavin Stanbrook, radio commentator and writer Helen Razor, and from the US, founding editor of Jacobin magazine, Bhaskar Sankara. Capital. Nice. By Karl Marx. Yep. <laughs> Fucking nightmare. <laughs> have you read that? No. I have read that. The whole thing? You don't really have to read the whole thing. There's Thank chapters and God. Is that, is that all three volumes? I don't fucking know. I'm not going to read this. <laughs> Give me the one liner on Marx though. What's the deal? Capitalism is in crisis. We only have to look at what's going on around the world. Spain, the United States, Trump. These situations aren't an anomaly. They exist because capitalism reproduces the inequalities that exist in our society and Marxism is the guide to change. In the effort of uh, the revolution, mm -hmm. you've uh, written a book called uh, uh, A Total Propaganda, Basic Marxist Brainwashing for the Angry and the Young. Yeah, it's peculiar because it actually ended up being profitable. Capitalism, um... you're welcome. In the book you write, uh, Western people of the millennial age range are the first generation in several to be worse off in many basic ways than their parents. Yes. Not true, my parents did not have Tamagotchis. Oh, God. All right, let's break it down. How are millennials fucked? They will be worse off in that they have no job security. And that changes every decision that you make. You can't budget for the future. You don't know if your job will be there. I mean, it's simple. People have crap education, less money, no chance to get, a, you know, secure housing. People who own their own homes are healthier. And that's not just correlation, that's causation. You've got black mould in your house, you can probably use your mortgage as a piggy bank and get someone to fix it. I can't get my real estate agent to get the mould out of my house. You've had a Jacobin, hugely successful political magazine in the scheme of left-wing media out there. you got like over 30,000 subscribers, online audience of a million people a month. Must be making some sweet dollar bills out of the socials and shit. Yeah, yeah actually, not bad. You know, I, I, I earn $45,000 uh, a year. It's enough to uh, have a one bedroom apartment in Brooklyn. Now, you're an indigenous activist. I saw you at the Invasion Day rally in January. Yeah. I was there. You're welcome. Good one. Um, <laughs> name me one way in which indigenous people have been victim to capitalism. Well, I mean, the question of land. The question of land rights. Yeah, you think different. about it like, yeah. you know, the, the whole process of colonization in this country led to the mass genocide and theft of Aboriginal land. The reason that was yeah, done... but apart from that. Apart from the mass genocide and the theft of the land. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, another one is just mass imprisonment, mass incarceration rates. Okay. Yeah, apart from that. Apart from that? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, just generally, you only have to look at the fact that, you know, Aboriginal people today are, are likely to uh, die 10 years earlier than their not Indigenous counterparts. Apart from that. <laughs>
That's a pretty good run. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think America could become a socialist society in your lifetime? I think within my lifetime, you could imagine like a left populist like Bernie Sanders getting elected. He'll yes. be 78. He'll be 78, but you know, it's not that people are living longer and longer. He keeps putting out these, um, <laughs> these videos of him like playing basketball. He's like banking it. I used to be a little bit better. So I can imagine like an and one like basketball mixtape of Bernie Sanders set to some hip hop music. You know, we released that in 2019, and by 2020, you know, the kids will, will think he's he's young and hip. Do you believe it's possible for a Marxist revolution to take place in Australia? We overthrow capitalism and we establish a socialist paradise. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. How is the revolution actually going to happen? Marx does not go into great detail no. about <laughs> it. All fucking this. No guy to a revolution. It's going to take mass action, and no. what that mass action looks like. That's not going to. That's definitely going to happen. No. The socialist alternative says a successful revolution will involve workers taking control of their workplaces, dismantling existing state institutions, parliaments, courts, the armed forces, and police, and replacing them with an entirely new state based on genuinely democratic control by the working class. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah. How does it all work? How does it, like, if someone steals my shit? Or oh, I don't have any shit, do I? I have no private property to own for someone to steal. Well, you know, no one's going to come up and take your toothbrush out of your mouth. Why it's not? Like, why would we want to? It's your toothbrush. You just put all germs on it. Like, who the you go? All right, I'm just going to run through some things. You tell me whether or not we'll still have them post-revolution. Okay. Okay? Uber. No. The ABC. Uh, no, sorry. Facebook? Some form of social media, I'm sure. Well, it won't be like, it won't be run by Mark Zuckerberg, let's put it that way. Okay. And it won't be snooped on. What's going to happen to him? I don't know. <laughs> Ask the comrades in the United States. Oh boy. Facebook? Uh, yeah, probably a state-owned <laughs> company, probably not. <laughs> state book. Netflix? Yeah, but it's free and it's better. It has more stuff on it. Not like the Australian Netflix. <laughs> Slammed. Sunrise? Uh, definitely not. No. Sex toys? Sex toys that I've used, do I have to share them with everyone else? <laughs> no. Um, no, that's fine. That's I can keep those? Yeah, you keep those. Yes! <laughs> Day one of the revolution, what happens? Is it like, is it setting fire to something? Do we yeah. put people's heads on spikes? No, that's not day one. Okay. <laughs> you can be very glad that it's not going to be violent, but it's going to be crazy. Well, that's what I'm worried about. I've done quite well. I'm worried what's going to happen to me in the revolution. <laughs> oh, you will still be treated like a god. Oh, thank God. In a certain way, if you're a capitalist, right now you're not truly as powerful as you think you are. Because you're subject to the whims of the market. You know, well, actually, this is a taxpayer-funded um, organization. That's where all my yeah, yeah. So from. this is one of the one of the uh, benign legacies of of, uh, of socialism. Well, I guess the Marxist revolution is just around the corner, and capitalism is going to end and everything. But in the meantime, let's make some money, bitch. Marxism, get your Marxism. Hot, fresh Marxism, people. Now, all this is made by slave labor, exploited by capitalism. Yeah. So. And that's how we can keep prices so low. <laughs> Stop selling and do it. Don't be a mug. Anyway, look at this little mini Marxist. Like a bottle and cigarette. Yeah. What's that? It's for the kids. Got to get them in young. All right. You're interested in buying something? What can I? What can I do for? I really love to manifest your dreams. Manifest your, your dreams. Fantastic. That is just uh, just forty bucks. The low low price of just forty dollars for that one. So. Oh, thank you so much. That's fantastic. <laughs> thank you. Yes. The system works, baby! Mwah. Our stand-up guest tonight is easily the greatest UK-based French stand-up comedian around. He's set to perform this Friday at Sydney's Comedy Store and his show, Wine List, is at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival from April 10th. Would you please welcome Marcel Lucon! <laughs> Wow. That's some post-Easter applause right there. <laughs> Easter, of course, wants a festival of new life. How do most Australians celebrate Easter? Drinking themselves unconscious and force-feeding confectionery into the face of an already fat child. <laughs> How are you celebrating new life this year? Oh, early death. There you go. Have some more sugar in your already obese face. There you go. Just 
do that. Teaching children to accept gifts from enormous mammals. <laughs> Symbolism of the rabbit at Easter? Sex. Easter should be a sex festival. <laughs> we can still involve the rabbits and the eggs, just not the kind that we tell children about. <laughs> The more kinky bastards, they can keep the crucifixion element if they wish. That's up to them. <laughs> Once again, religion getting in the way of a perfectly legitimate celebration. <laughs> I cannot trust the Bible. It's too vague, you know. Oh, Jesus turned the water to wine. We are never told what grape, <laughs> what vintage, you know. The omission of facts like this could render such a book almost unbelievable. <laughs> but I've been uh, touring your country. I've been uh, perform I've been touring your country. I started in Perth, the wild west of Australia. <laughs> And you know it is wild, huh? Soon as you arrive, tells to you on the sign. It says, Welcome to Perth! Wah! <laughs> okay. You know what you are getting, huh? It's the same with other cities, similar policy, you know? Adelaide, it's quite laid back, you know? Oh, welcome to Adelaide! Sha! <laughs> Don't really give a shit. Darwin, quite feral. Mm -hmm. So welcome to Darwin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The teeth. Melbourne seem to be welcoming only one person of the name Vic. I knew it was cliquey. But wow, that's too much. <laughs> Your entire Australian news seems to be dominated by a cricketer rubbing a ball on his dick. <laughs> it's bizarre. You know? I, I don't understand we're still watching sport now that Eric Cantona is not in sport. It's boring, you know. That's a man who knew to fuck about with sport and do it well. <laughs> Brought things to the game we did not know it could be in the game. Huh? <laughs> Poetry, humor, kung fu. <laughs> did not know that was, well, it was not allowed, but he took him to, you know, show us that was the truth. Huh? <laughs> now Cantona has moved on to better things than sport. Huh? Now Cantona is making films that will be shown in Cannes. Most of your footballers, they are making films that will be shown in court. <laughs> Dirty bastards. Before Australia, I am uh, making the tour of the United Kingdom. Hmm. To be in that country with a bank account full of euros. <laughs> what a time to be alive. <laughs> For me, every hour was happy hour. <laughs> Okay, to explain to the less knowledgeable, um, how to explain. In your country, you made the yes, no vote on whether persons who fuck in the ass should be married. <laughs> Britain, they made a yes, no vote whether to fuck themselves in the ass. <laughs> And they voted yes. It's a surprise to us, a surprise to them even. Oh, did we vote yes? Why? But truly, who is happy with their politicians? Eh? Myself, I think I will run for presidency of France next time. Why not? Hmm? One policy only. I plan to start a global referendum to get planet Earth 
to leave the solar system. <laughs> I think we are starting to be an embarrassment to the lumps of dust and rock that are floating around out there. Now. Time to go. How will you achieve this, Marcel? I don't know. <laughs> There was no strategy for the Brexit. Why the fuck should I have a plan? Mm. Vote for that shit, sort it out later. Mm. It's probably just a bit of admin. <laughs> well, you can only have so much of a good thing. I have been Marcel Lucan. You have been you. Marcel Lucan, everyone. Thank you. Oh, oh my. Tomorrow we've got live music from Jack River. Join us in. Flames up next on ABC Comedy. Good night.